Today's video will uh, go over this uh, ESP32 expansion board in a little bit more detail than I did in my last video. And the intent is to look at the voltages at various pins, depending on whether or not the ESP32 is in the board and the position of the jumper, as well as uh, whether you're feeding power through the barrel jack or one of the USB uh, connections. One of the things to note is you cannot program the ESP32 using USB connectors while it's in the board. So you have to program it by connecting your USB connection directly to your ESP32, not through this board. All right, so the voltages we're going to look at are the voltages is at this 3.3 uh, volt pin, this 5 volt pin, which is the one that feeds power to the ESP32, voltage along the red row of pins, uh, voltage at the 5 volt pins over here, as well as this 3.3 volt pin over here, and the VCC pin over here. Uh, and then, like I said, we're going to look at what happens when you move the jumper around. All right, so I have it set up here on the table. Um, I am coming in with power through USB C in this case, and I've got the jumper in the 3.3 volt position. Um, the ESP32 obviously is plugged in. And you're seeing 3.3 um, volts on this meter, which is showing the voltage at the red pins. 3.3 volts over here, which is showing the voltage at the VCC pin. And then you've got 4.8, basically, volts um, over here, which is showing the voltage at the 5 volt pin of the ESP32. And then these uh, green and blue wires uh, go off to another uh, multimeter that I have, and it's showing that same 4.77, 4.78 volts at this group of 5-volt pins um, over here in the upper right. So um, with the ESP32 plugged in, you can produce the 3.3 volts when you've got the jumper in the 3.3 volt position. That's the only way that you'll ever see 3.3 volts at any of the pins um, you have to have the ESP32 plugged into the board. So it's using the voltage regulator on the ESP32 to produce that 3.3 volts. Um, if I then move the jumper to the 5 volt position, now all of the um, pins and all of the multimeters are reading 4.77 volts. So basically that jumper, all it does is control the voltage at the red pins and at the VCC pin, and also will send voltage of 3.3 volts to this group of 3.3 volts pins. Let me just prove that to myself by moving that over. And I'm gonna move these jumpers to here, which is going off to my other meter, yeah. So now the 3.3 volt pins are reading uh, 3.29 volts. I'm going to jump that over to the 5 volt position. And all of these meters are reading 4.77, with the exception of the 3.3 volt. So you, you are getting 3.3 volts at this upper right group of pins when you have the SP32 plugged into the board, regardless of the position of the jumper. I'll just move that over one more time. Yeah, that's correct. Now I'm going to remove the ESP32 from the expansion board. And now what we're seeing is these capacitors discharging on uh, these multimeters, as well as the other multimeter that's connected uh, up to this uh, green and blue wires over here on the other multimeter. So, um, you will not get 3.3 volts anywhere if the ESP32 is not plugged in. I'm going to move the jumper over to the 5 volt position. And now we're getting the basically the 5 volts at the VCC, 5 volts at the red pins, 5 volts at the 5 volt pin for the ESP32. Uh, we're getting 0 at the 3.3 over here. I'm going to move these back over to the 5 volt position. And sure enough, it's reading 4.85, just like the other meters. Um, all right, so I think that pretty much covers 
what this looks like when you're using the one of the two USB ports for your input power. I'm going to unplug that and come in with the barrel jack. That'll be the final test. And I have an external power supply where I can vary the voltage. I'm going to just set it to 5 volts to start. It does say on the board that this barrel jack is for DC 6.5 to 16 volts. That's what it's printed on the expansion board next to the barrel jack. So let me turn on the 5 volt power. There we go. So now we're getting 4.99 or 5 volts at all the positions that we're probing. Um, I will now jump it to the 3.3 just to prove this point that you will never get 3.3 volts um, without the ESP32 in place. And I'm going to jump these over. Right. Right. Nothing at the 3.3 volt position. And put this back at the 5 volt position. Moving the jumper again. It's a little tricky. These pins are. Uh, Kind of in a tight, tight spot there, so excuse me while I do this. There we go. Okay, so now all the positions we're probing are reading 5 volts. We're coming in with 5 volts from the power supply, which is actually less than it says uh, on the barrel jack, or printed next to the barrel jack. Now I'm going to increase that voltage to 6.5 volts. Watch what happens. Now we're getting 6.5 volts everywhere, and that includes the input 5 volt pin to the ESP32. So I'm going to increase that to say 9 volts, and now everything's reading 9 volts. So you would fry your ESP32 by providing it with too much voltage on its power supply pin. Take it up to 16 volts. And now it's reading 16 volts everywhere. So I, I'm not sure why they had this barrel jack here and why they're saying that you can supply it with this range of voltages. But uh, to me, it looks like I would avoid using that barrel jack because it's not safe for your ESP32 supply voltage. Um, all right. I think that covers everything. And uh, that's it for this video. Thanks.